Ready, go. All righty, ladies and gents. I'm on a rocking chair tonight. Uh, so I, if if this goes at any stage tonight, uh, you understand why. But um, we got a special guest, none other than the Anvil, Lachlan Adair. How are you, mate? Good, yourself? Very well, very, very well. well. There's there's a lot going on uh, in the arm wrestling world for you at the moment, and. Uh, I wanted to have yeah. a bit of a chat about all things that are happening. I think there's a lot going on for both of us. There is. Of us. There is, yes. Yeah, well, as we saw uh, today, Jordan Davis yeah. himself has booked for the Zlotty Tour 2019. Yep. Nice. Um, yeah, tell me about it, man. How, where, where's your head at going into something like this? Ooh. Yeah. It's, it's so untested. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, we went to Arizona and I've been having Giannis as a coach for about six weeks and then... I got injured in Arizona and that's all feeling pretty good now. But mm. since then, I've had a couple of more months training with Giannis's Latvian system and mm. like my numbers have gone through the roof. How long have you been with that system now, Total? Oh, what are we? We're in October. So, like five months? Five months. Yeah. Five months of a of a system designed by a multiple world champion who's produced other world champions too, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. And then, so, you you've come from you, your background was obviously you've been in strength for a long time. You've yeah, yeah. I've been I've been powerlifting for. How how do you, how do you well, compare this system that Giannis has you under compared to any other system you've worked on before? It's exactly in li- like the fundamentals are exactly in line with what I did in powerlifting. Mm-hmm. So the concept is very easy for me to get my head around. And same with Toddzilla, uh, your system mm-hmm. the fundamental fundamentals are correct which leads me to the point with powerlifting uh every program works mm. provided the fundamentals are correct so you've obviously had massive gains in yours and i've obviously had massive gains in mm. mine um you know i started bigger so my numbers are kind of yeah. a little bit higher yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you, that, that photo that photo on instagram last night oh, which, you guys, which you guys can see right here yeah. uh, oh my goodness that <laughs> that that's that was an out angling masterclass talking about yeah, looking yeah. big, but but you've got the world's attention at the moment. Um, everyone is kind of surprised. Like like taking taking a step back, the context of Australian arm wrestling. A lot of people have rubbished Australian arm wrestling for a long time, and Rob Vigent said kind nothing of for good reason. Right? Nothing like, good's going to come out yeah. of Australia. We've got Chris Gobby, the the historical <laughs> lead troll on, on that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but there's been a lot of people with a very anti-Australian sentiment, and that seems to be changing at the moment. Uh, it is, it is, and you're one of the reasons. <laughs> Why? Well, that's the thing. I'm like, I did, I did all right against a yellow. Um, I don't think, I think people just expected him to steamroll me, and mm. and then yes, he won, but it wasn't exactly mm. you know, easy money all day. Um, and as I said, that was only like six weeks into working with a with a system, and yeah. my numbers even compared to. Uh, pre Arizona to now, uh, like a third more. Mm. In some in some numbers are even. That's 50, a lot. A third, a third more is a hell of a lot in strength. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is, is when you come from powerlifting, you know how to get strong. You've got that neural output. So when I get asked all the time, what is the benefit of powerlifting into arm wrestling? And mm. by itself, nothing. Mm. <laughs> but. <laughs> You know what I've my opinion is is that I know how to redline and I'm quite comfortable in that mm. that redlining redlining that that neural output. Um, yeah, you know, kind of getting a bit dizzy and pa- and just about like passing out, looking like I'm having a seizure. After yeah, a set. yeah, yeah. He's not unusual for powerlifters. Yeah, like, you guys are used to that. Yeah. yeah. Um, now it's it's interesting because I started the arm wrestling journey weak, where you started the arm wrestling journey strong. Um, and it led to a different different pathway yeah. um, for the way that we developed in the, in, in the sport. There's obviously yeah. there's obviously two sides to the sport being one being strength, the other being combat. Um, I feel they're equally important. I think we're you? I think we're starting to meet in the middle. Yeah, of that. So yeah, yeah, like yeah. the strength being <laughs> strong for me, easy. That, that's that's the easy bit. Yeah. And if you look at the responses on YouTube, it's like yeah, he's you know he's the strongest, but is he the best? Yeah. And I think that that blend of the two is what makes mm. the best arm wrestler. So I think you yeah. and I are probably where we're now meeting. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was the, way in the combat camp for a yeah, long yeah. time, and I and I'm into it. So it makes the the strength part easy. So yeah, I guess where I am in my training is, uh, 
not trying to muscle through everyone. Like where yeah. to find just the easiest way yeah. through someone's pin line. So, well, you mentioned that tournament pulling. Um, very different to super matches. You've had a lot of super matches in recent times. I have. This time it's a tournament and it's it's a deep tournament. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're like, there's no warm up the in the early rounds. 18. Uh, the, the deepest is Lottie, then 18. Um, yeah. In 2019, we've got Dan Mosier. has just confirmed mm-hmm. today he's going to Zlotty. Yeah. So the Americans are sending over a pretty significant team as well. Yep. And I think because of the top eight, uh, the top mm. eight final, everyone either wants to go watch and whoever's watching is going to compete. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, well, Dan Mosier, that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, he'll if, if, he, class, if right? he can, yeah, yeah, yeah he'll yeah. be in my way class. If he can keep <laughs> his elbow down, I think honestly, like it's not, nothing against Dan. He's a he's a he's a very strong puller. Yeah, um, but he's got that Louisiana hop that is okay in North America, mm. but in WAF, I, like, I I I just hate to see him go out with fouls. But well, that's my I, fear I hope for him. He does go on. He uh, does compete on his left first. Yeah, you get which the was feel. the advice that. That Todd gave, which kind of puts me in a bit of a <laughs> yeah, that's your so, that's your gun arm, isn't it? I yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. it's it's kind of it's weird. My my left arm, my left arm is stronger than my right arm, but my right hand is stronger than my left hand. So there's yeah. like I I feel like I can hit a little bit better with my right. Yep. Um, but well, with my left, you once take the battle's me. on in the left, it's hard. Well, to Well, I can like I don't care where you take me in my left. Like <laughs> where my right, it's like oh, don't take me there. Oh, don't take me there. Like so, mm-hmm. I really have had to to combat my way out of there. So back to the original question was, how do you think I'm going to go with the it, depth of the tournament? It's if you're going to ask me 2018, where Giannis's other strongest student is Sandris. Mm-hmm. I forget his last name. Um, he won it. Right hand. I don't know where he came on left, but uh, right handed he won it. And our strength levels are, you know, some angles I'm stronger and some angles mm. Giannis hasn't commented on. <laughs> which, <laughs> which we might be on par. He might have yeah. you know, some angles that, you know, of course he's got angles stronger than mine. The guy's like six foot five. Oh, he's a, I didn't realize he was a tall guy. Yeah, he's 194 centimeters. Okay. So, so, yeah. And so, so naturally, you guys are going to have different, different allocations of strength. Mm. Um, mm. You, you, I, I've always likened you to Krasimir Kostadinov. When I think, if I think of an elite guy, I just like frame wise. Uh, yeah, and I'm but you don't, really but you don't pull like him be. now. You, no. you started off pulling like him, but yeah. you've evolved more to a big version of Giannis. <laughs> trying, <laughs> I'm really trying. Like, uh, I think I mentioned it before in previous podcasts. Is when you, when you have a coach, and you've done the same thing. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Todd, <laughs> you know, it's but like Giannis has a really long headed. Bicep, so you know everyone's seen me. Me pull like a really long head bicep, long humerus, short radial bone, and a mm. really wide fat hand. Mm. Um, that's basically Giannis. Does mm. that mean that I've got the same twitch and all that sort of stuff? I don't know, but there's some the proportions are you know mm. they're, they're roughly the same. Where yeah. um, Krasimir is, he, he's all in. He and, and Krasimir, I heard is. Um, Competing in the ninety-five kilo category, I think he Which is interesting. He, he will be one of the favourites uh, along with uh, Ogzan Kocak from Turkey. So what's what's happening there? So we have got the top eight and the hundred and five kilo class and above is going to be considered for the super heavyweight top eight. I don't know that with certainty. That's an assumption that I've made. Okay. What the only thing that I know that is is there is a ninety-five kilo top eight, and I believe there's a women's top eight. Okay. Where uh, they draw their people from. Um, yeah. I know John. John, I spoke to John yesterday and yeah, he, yeah. I don't know if this is public yet, but it is now. Um, <laughs> John told me he has signed the dotted line yeah, and yeah, is, yeah. is in and will be one of the champions of 95 kilos. And I believe Ross Dumbabayev is another one that's confirmed. Yeah, that makes more sense. I don't know who else is going to be in that, that champions list. That makes it a very exciting. And makes it very exciting, but what will Prudnik do? Because well, yeah, because he's he could be ninety five if he wanted to. Yeah, like the only reason he got up to one hundred and ten, yeah, uh, uh, you know, was because yeah. he had to compete against one hundred and eighty uh, kilo Levan. And 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 now with the fact that like they're giving away fifty thousand dollars for this year's top eight, well, let's bah. let's just assume they're doing the same again next year for for all of the top eights. Well, yeah, it can Prudnik resist that urge to go down and try to grab that fifty grand? Go down and pull John. Yeah. yeah. Like well, be one of the champions. Like, okay, yeah, like pretty good. Have to be a champion. And like he competed at ninety for a long time. Right? He did. That was always his his go to. Yeah. Um, so, 
I think that he could get back there pretty quickly. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump off the whatever he's on. <laughs> <laughs> And then it'll be back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, other people that come to my mind, that, like if I was to think of the champions that might be, obviously we've got John and obviously we've got Rustam. Um, Prudnik could. Let's assume Prudnik will go Gasparini down. could. Ooh. There's a champion, 95, if yeah, you've ever seen one. And he's a butthurt Italian, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he wants. He needs to redeem himself. Uh, well, like, we, he actually does it. We all know he's a, he's a yeah. weapon. Yeah, But laugh, I yeah. think he would like to get back in there and I think he's 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 featured Plenty with PA on the past. So. Uh, yeah, I think if he if he wins or gets very close to it, but like, yeah, you know, mm. screw, screw your wow, <laughs> this is stupid, it's stupid, get out of here. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. So yeah. I don't know that that's what I'm dreaming as as those four champions. Uh, I yeah. think that if if WAL didn't have tight contracts on American athletes, which John isn't contracted, so he's free. Yeah, I think Todd Hutchins would be another invitation uh, for that 95 kilo class. Um, given what he's done in the past that way, I think naturally he'd be a call up, but I don't think we'll see him because... The challenges will be Ryan Bowen. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon if Dan Mosey keeps his elbow down... I think yeah, he could, be. he could be. He could be. amazing. And who's that, that the Turkish guy you mentioned? Uh, Ogazan Kocak. Yeah, yeah. Is he he's, Turkish? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he's a real deal. He, um, he won juniors a lot in WAF. Yeah, he yeah. Um, beat Marcio Barbosa at Zlotti mm-hmm. um, in the overalls mm-hmm. two years ago or something. He's he's someone yeah. who's been able to beat Zolowev at eighty six kilos, and he'll be stepping up to ninety five apparently. Yeah. Okay. And who would be the fourth? Um, uh, whoever. I don't know. Yeah. And it's open, isn't it? But that's the thing. Like, uh, and and coming back to a bit more of a broader topic, are you intimidated at all by this lotty crowd? Like, the world has said that European arm wrestlers are just flat out stronger. Um, you've. I mean, you've got inside information. I've got inside information based on our training numbers that they're not. No, nah. but nah. They, one thing is for sure. Human. <laughs> one thing is for sure is, uh, it's their home turf, and it's their. Fam- they're more familiar with the the conditions of the starts and setups and everything. Yeah, and then, like we're flying in kind of early, but it's still going to mm. knock us to six. So anyone who's flying more we're, than we're, ten hours, our, our trip is a forty-hour tr- <laughs> journey. <laughs> From from getting on the first plane to getting off the last is forty oh, hours I to know. get there, and on the way home too. <laughs> and I got to work the next day. We get home like Thursday morning at like uh, five a.m. Yeah, and I'm working seven thirty in the morning the next day. Uh, no, that's it's terrible. Gonna, but it's going to be brutal. But luckily, we are getting over there. Uh, I think we get there on the the uh, evening of the third, and we compete on the seventh. Yeah, so we got a few days up our sleeve. But yeah, yeah are, are you intimidated at all by the Europeans? Nah. I've got practice, right? So the practice is like basically from six months in. No, 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 let's take it back even further. I first started four weeks later on competing. Mm. Like I had never put my arm on the table before. Four weeks later on competing. And you beat a Latvian champion that day. No, no, no. That was that was the Queensland when I first started. Okay, okay. Gotcha. yeah, yeah. I got Torben beat me. <laughs> okay. I love you, Torben, but come on, man. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then I think it was like a year later, I'd, you know, mm. I'd kind of, I'd, I'd won a super heavyweight. Yeah. Uh, Australian and, and that, on the left. And that, like, uh, normally that wouldn't be that special according to the international scene, but you beat someone with credibility that day. Yeah. You twice. beat, <laughs> yeah. You be the former <laughs> Latvian super heavyweight <laughs> champion Gunter Zbikovs, who'd moved to Australia a couple of years prior to, to mm. you arriving in the sport, and he was undefeated in Australia at that time. No one had troubled him even close, and you put him in a hook on left. <laughs> and I thought you were going to break your arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't ever, you know, I didn't feel like that way. Yeah, oh, I that, was that's on. it. I was so set. I, I was so set. <laughs> I thought I was sick filming it. <laughs> I'm like, here it goes, and it. You actually didn't have bad shape at all. You were actually, no. you looked like a, a really good technical hook being set, but it was red line. And Gunter's, he's a top roller with, he was taller than you, he was thicker than you, and he's, he's a heavy. And, and he's, and he was a multiple European <laughs> Latvian champion. I thought, here it goes. Lachlan's arm's going to blood, going to bust, but it didn't. So, you just fact, about did on my right arm. The mate. fact that it didn't oh, that yeah. day, I think that you're probably safe. I don't think. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm going to break my arm. <laughs> but like the point I'm trying to make is, is from the very beginning when I've just thrown myself in the deep end mm. hard, like to the point where I was like, does Ryan not like me? He keeps on giving me these <laughs> monsters to arm wrestle that I'm, you know, I don't think I'm ready for. But yeah. you know. I'm feeling more ready than I ever have. Yeah. I don't think there are too many arm wrestlers. Like if we're going to go do gym numbers, I don't think there's many people in my weight class at Zlotti that is, mm. you know. That are be, pulling the same numbers in the gym. No, you know, they're going to be close. And that's where it'll be interesting. The guys who are close and have that experience, because I've been pulling for three and a half years now, mm. which is. Well, that's John's, John's magic number. John says three years, you can be world champ. Well, yeah, so, hey. <laughs> so that was easy. Yeah, three years is how long it took John, you reckon? No. Okay. Well, um, that's cool. Um, and we've been practicing our speed, me more so. Mm. And what, what's been interesting is I'm a very fast, like powerful power lifter. Like everything, mm. people go, oh, you could have gone heavy. And I'm going, nope. Like everything yeah. with me moves quickly until it doesn't move at all. Yeah. And arm wrestling hasn't been the same way and I think that comes down to a little bit of neurological efficiency a little bit of uh, trust in my angles and, and timing yeah and as we saw last night in the video there's plenty of speed there from both of us mm. it's just timing yeah timing's the key you miss yeah. the start it's 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 awful yeah where and, if, and you, if you win the start if you win that timing battle oh man joke. you're <laughs> starting you're starting at worst three quarters of the way to win yeah so. Yeah, and I feel, I've always felt like, get the start finished. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah, it's not happening. But there are, you know, I've, because of a, a lack of timing in the past, I get mm. very used to, I have a real stop there. So even if I hit a little bit late, mm. as long as I'm hitting and not just, like if I'm bracing, I'm going to get hammered. Yeah. Um, but if I'm loose and can get a hit somewhere, mm. it can be here. I think for the most part, yeah. I should be okay Against most of them, you know, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I, I'm quietly confident, but you don't want to. Well, you don't want to eat. That's, shit, that's right? the thing. Like, I, honestly, like we we touched on it before. The um the opinion of Australian arm wrestling from the global standpoint is in a very transitionary pa- phase at the moment. Mm. Um, I remember. We're, we're I remember. Like, yeah, nah, nah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember <laughs> that happening in 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 just the Australian scene for myself. I remember when uh, I started, and people thought I was no good, mm. and then. I had ambition of being really good and people were like, nah, 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 nah. And then all of a sudden, the numbers numbers turn and everyone thinks you're good. Mm. I feel like that's happening for Australian arm wrestling at the moment. Oh. A year ago, uh, everyone would have laughed at the concept of 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 Ryan Bowen and Lachlan Adair potentially being on the podium of his lottie. Yeah. <laughs> Could oh. you imagine? <laughs> Could oh. you imagine? <laughs> but now, like, don't get me wrong, there's still plenty of people that think we're rubbish. But... Yeah. There's an equal number now who actually think we are going to be on the podium. And yeah. now that John Brzezink, Giannis Hamlin's, Todd Hutchins, they're people that are all in the camp of you can be on the podium. Yeah, and well, both of us. And, yeah. but, the, but the really interesting part is is we have the best corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Uh, and whether or not, like if it gets down to a final and, and both myself and Sandra's, his student make it, mm. you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm not going to hold any grudges if, if Giannis goes with his countrymen. Fair call. I think, I think, but I've still got you, Jordan, and John. Yeah, yeah. And I think, we, I right. think we have all of Sweden as well. Yeah. yeah I yeah, think yeah, we true, have all of And I, I even think we have Mazarenko behind us. I think Mazarenko wants the storyline of the, the Aussie wave arriving. I think he really loves that story, huh? It's just <laughs> when I was flicking through of what to, what to listen to on the way over on the drive. On uh, on YouTube, um, and there was a little video of Bresnan saying mm. like, "Wow, oh my God!" was the title like "Old Man Strength." He got like some yeah. tick bite. On yeah. the I didn't even know watching it because <laughs> uh, I'm not going to read subtitles while I'm driving. But uh, <laughs> yeah, he loves the "Wow, oh my God!" <laughs> yeah, I, I think the 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 storyline of Australian arm wrestling actually becoming something legitimate is very fascinating. We don't have a lot of numbers, but we've got a very good system here in Australia. A lot of a lot of passionate people working together to build it, and we've had good influence at the right time. Um, yeah, and the, the coaching, I mean, I've, I get people telling me on, on Instagram, like, you don't need a coach. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> s- you need a coach. <laughs> uh, this is what you need. You just need to arm wrestle 24-7. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> don't don't need that, uh, coach. 
Yeah. Uh, since doing that. Well, well, in terms of the YouTube audience and uh, the, the social media awareness of um, of Australian arm wrestling and yourself, myself, um, I'm noticing that that's hitting a critical mass at the moment where it's evolving past just the people who already really knew us quite intimately and yeah. we're breaking into the, the wider audience and <laughs> and that's that's very interesting. We get a lot of steroid comments. We yeah. get a lot, a lot of who the hell's this ginger comments. We got <laughs> like, there's a lot of this stuff going on. But <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of where they, they see us on YouTube and then they go to our social media and I, I've copped a fair bit of this lately and I've even had some people that I know say like, hey man, what's your stack? Mm. I'm going, <laughs> nothing. Thing, <laughs> yeah. Well, well um, as you know, I went and got my my bloods tested for the first time uh, yeah. the other day, and and the purpose, the main purpose, was to see where my testosterone was at, and to be able to hand that to my nutritionist, who's your nutritionist that you yeah. put me on to. Yeah. Um, you know, Jay, uh, the strength coach, yeah. in- info at the strength coach dot com. Is it here. no? Oh, is it info? Yeah, yeah info. Web, <laughs> website. Yeah. Not, yeah. Good man, good man, very yeah, talented. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I forgot my point, but um. What was I saying? Oh, the testosterone. You got yeah, testos- testosterone. And, yeah. and for me, um, that was the first time. It was an eye-opening thing for me because uh, I'm happy to talk about it quite openly. Honestly, I think I would be happy to be on testosterone replacement therapy someday, but just not yet. I feel yeah. I feel too weird because of the whole once you're on, you're on thing. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on the same the same track. Like, of course, you know, being a strength ath- strength athlete for so long, you consider it. Mm. Right, especially if there's a particular number that you can get to, but you're plateaued in your training and mm. you don't know what you're doing wrong, you just go stuff it. I'm gonna, you know, I've never done that. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and there, there is some stuff that just flat doesn't work. Yep. Um, and I'll be quite honest, I took a psalm. It was the MK two eight six six because to try and heal up mm. from the injury. It makes you hungry, no? No. No, that was the growth hormone screed Okay. Yeah. Uh, this one I didn't notice working. Yeah. And when I stopped taking it, I didn't notice. Did it? And I continued to get stronger. I continued to lose weight as was the plan mm. um, and still get stronger. And yep. the injury was still there. <laughs> yeah. Like that didn't get any better. And so I don't, I don't well, think that the, was I, useful at when all. When I, I worked in the, I opened a supplement store um, and mm. you see everything from the, the creatine and BCAAs uh, all the way up to, I guess, in, injectable steroids, whatever, um, on a scale of how effective slash how much people believe. Like when you're a new, when you're a new athlete, you think taking creatine and BCAAs is going to turn you into a freaking monster. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and it kind of does because the placebo effect really kicks well, yeah, in. Well, yeah, because like you've made a financial... Yeah. Uh, I love the placebo effect. Hell, I, I I want someone to strap me down, <laughs> knock me out and tell me they injected me with fucking the best steroids on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> and just see how what, I, what I feel like. <laughs> just... Just tremble on, yeah, uh, but like hypnosis, yeah, <laughs> hypnosis tremble. I would love to, to, because I, I think, yeah. and that would make you ferocious. You'd be just like, yep, all right, we'll do it. But yeah, I know, and I'm like, that, that's that's an interesting <laughs> point because even today I'm just listening, you know, I'm squatting and I'm and I'm listening to some just you know music and I'm going through my through the motions, mm. and I unrack the weight and went, why does this feel so heavy? Mm. And then I got mad at it. Mm. And getting mad at it made it feel real light. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you, know, you, you know, for me, the the drug that I'm a regular on that makes a difference is caffeine. Yeah. When I <laughs> I, I got to I got to make sure I don't go over the top of it because I build up the tolerance too much. Yeah. But when I haven't taken caffeine for a long time and then I do, oh my goodness! <laughs> a my videos are more entertaining because I talk <laughs> a lot faster. <laughs> but yeah. I feel excited to lift when I'm on caffeine. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But for me, like I said, back to it, testosterone replacement therapy, I've only just been educated on it in the last three months. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think there's a problem with it. Yeah. Um, but like you said, like you don't want to be a Bajant and just get smashed by <laughs> Chance Shaw looking skinny, <laughs> haven't eaten, eat, eaten a carb in six months. You're like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. But then he gets on. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. And it's a different beast. He's, um, yeah, he turns into a monster and he's a complete ass when he does it. Yeah, Remember yeah, he presents yeah. in the pool going, I think I'm the number one man in the planet <laughs> right now. No one can touch me. And, and uh, Renee, John's wife, yeah, was like, that's nice. <laughs> 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 it's the most condescending thing I ever heard. It was brilliant. Uh, uh, but anyway, so Zlotty is going to be an interesting one. Like, it, it's, Zlotty is an untested event. 
Mm. Um, so there will be people, without a doubt, um, on something. And yes. on that note, I've been asked, like, why don't you do WAF or IFA? You know, because mm. you, you know, if you really are natty, why don't you go into a competition that mm. that isn't, but uh, that that is drug tested rather? And yeah, fair call. However, with the split with WAF and IFA, if we're going to fly forty hours mm. on a plane, I'm not going to go to a competition where, if say for example, I win. It, it, it's a cheaper mm. win, right? Yeah. Because of the split, well, it's a cheaper yeah, win. Yeah, and, and I'm with you on jumping in the deep end. I've I've yeah. always been someone who has, and, and everyone can confirm this yeah. that I overextend on what I my reputation yeah. should be. But that has been my best way to progress, without yeah. a doubt. So for me, where I'm at right now, Zlotti is that is exactly that. Exactly, I'm like hell yeah. yeah! I want to go right into that deep end, feel yeah. the best. I want to group up with Krasmir Kostadino. I want to yeah. feel that and I'm ready to go. And I'll, I'll go into it in my head, fully believing that I can win it. Mm. But at the end of it, I know if that doesn't happen, I'm going to know that like I'm going to be an even better arm wrestler having done that mm. uh, than I would have been otherwise. So, yeah. you know, the, it's a win-win. But like I said, if we're flying that far, well, I'm going in the most premier competition in the world. You know, I'm not going to go to some half-assed thing. Are you, <laughs> do you have to fly 40 hours? No. <laughs> like... Yeah. yeah, so that that's been an interesting uh, development, I guess, with the awareness of Australian arm wrestling is uh, the drug testing and well, mm. you know, who's on drugs, who isn't on drugs, and yep, you yeah. know, and you get lots of questions and stuff like that. But mm. so, but yep. I think it's a good indicator that we're progressing. The, yeah, I had one guy. The, I was like, well, thank you for the compliment. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but the, sorry. The, no. Definitely, the the more numbers that my every time I wonder if Max goes up, um, I, I get more and more comments. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So good. Every uh, every photo where I'm out angling yeah. everyone, <laughs> I get even. More. I think you do it better than Mike Aiello. I gotta say, <laughs> I think uh, Mike's now taking the back seat. Some of your recent out angling efforts from Arizona from last night. Yeah, I even got him in Arizona too. <laughs> Holy do. Anyway, guys, we're gonna take a break, and we'll yeah. be back with more with the anvil. Ready, go. Alrighty, ladies and gents, we are back. We are with Lachlan the Anvil Adair. Man, it's uh. We're on such a roll at the moment, and part of the reason um, that you told me about in the last mm. three months is your nutrition. Yeah. Tell me so about So, to start off, I guess the key point was working with Jay Tyler, and, like, don't hold it against him. He's got two first names as his name. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but the, the biggest change has been less protein. Yep. Now I've been I kind of went on a gut health kick and and tried to really improve that and I was still eating I think like close to two grams of protein per kilo of body weight mm. uh, no no per yeah Sounds yeah, right. yeah two kilo yeah, so yeah, even, even more even it was more. I was two and a half yeah mm. I was I was averaging about two hundred and thirty to two hundred and fifty grams of protein per day yeah that's a lot. And I was eating a lot of meat, like a kilo of meat. Mm, I remember, I remember coming around to your place, and you were, yeah. you were eating huge steaks, and yeah. And I was on, I was following like that vertical diet, which mm-hmm. has a lot of meat in it, and a lot of meat and rice. And I think that diet's okay. But um, having worked with Jay now, my carbohydrate intake is like three hundred and seventy-five grams mm. a day, mm-hmm. and my of clean carbs too, mm. between oats, <laughs> rice. Um and sweet potato. Mm. What else have I got? That's rice, sweet potato. That's spelt, really spelt pasta. Oh, and spelt pasta. Yeah, that spelt yeah. pasta is a game changer. I like that yeah. stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, massive amounts of carbs, which makes sense because when we look at uh, what energy sources we're using when we're sprinting or arm wrestling or, or powerlifting, it's carbohydrates. Mm. We're using fats and stuff with our, with our lower intensity stuff. So I've still had to walk. Uh, I do like 10,000 steps a day as often as I can. Um, but the nutrition specifically, my fat is quite high, which mm-hmm. I said to him, look, I need high levels What's of fat. What's your fat at? 110. Yep. Um, and that doesn't include my cod liver oil intake. That's just yep. dietary like from food. Yeah. Um, and I've still managed to lose, since Arizona, about 10 kilos. Mm. Um, and really the last seven kilos has been with Jay and I've felt stronger than I ever have. Like I pulled a 350 mm. kilo deadlift. Mm. Which was what, a 20 kilo PR, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And like I hadn't used a deadlift bar in ages. I've been using a stiff bar at home and that 
gave yep. me a lot more power off the floor. But anyway, the nutrition, like my gut health, my digestion is way better than it was. Mm. Um, well, it's interesting because you recommended Jay to me. I've just jumped on board with him. Uh, I'm, I'm eight days in. Mm. And uh, I lost too much weight in the first four days and uh, I had a consultation with him and he's like, no, you're competing yeah. 95 kilos. We need to up your carbohydrates massively because yeah. um, I I was logging everything and I'd gone lower than what he actually prescribed me on carbohydrates. And yeah. today's been the first full day where I've attempted to eat the 370 grams of carbs and holy dooly, I sat for an hour today on meal three uh, trying to get in. Sweet, oh, you're trying to get it in. Trying to get this, yeah. Man, trying gonna... to get this carbohydrate, this sweet potato. <laughs> it was like it was. I was so depressed sitting there. <laughs> I, 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 had, I ended up drinking like four glasses of water because I had to. I was in in the end. I was taking it like a tablet yeah, because yeah. like I was doing like forty chews per piece because I, <laughs> my body was like no more. Yeah, I'm okay. not doing it. So I, I don't feel like I need a force feed at oh. all. Like the, he asked me. He asked me. Holy was it last week? He said. How's your hunger? And I said, I'm never full and I'm never hungry. Mm. And to me, that that's perfect because it goes in line with a couple of things that I'm quite interested in with longevity. Like, mm. not just my longevity as, a, as an athlete, but my longevity as a, as a human and a father is if I'm not stuffing my system down all the time, you know, mm. uh, I'm going to live longer. Yep. A, you know, it stands to reason. So, uh, and I've been on that David Sinclair kick recently the Australian geneticist anyway we won't get into that that's that's a can of worms we won't (laughs) go there um but yeah since the nutrition I've been feeling so much better way less protein than than the industry and what people you know would lead you to believe Mm. um yeah sleep is better so I think our numbers are pretty similar at the moment Jay's prescribed me as of today 370 grams carbs um I think I'm on 100 grams protein or 110 on protein. Oh, that'd be fat. That's oh, yeah, yeah. too low for protein. Maybe, Maybe 150 or something then. Yeah, yeah. Something so I'm like on that. 185 approximately yep. a day. Yeah. And I can tell you right now, like I said, I'm it's it's nighttime here now and I have about 100 grams of carbs that I've still got to go and I'm dreading... You got the rice cakes? <laughs> I'm, I'm dreading... I've got rice being prepared for me in there. Thank you, Heather. Yeah. Um, but, oh man, uh, like I said... <laughs> I think I'll get used to it. Surely I'll get used yeah, to it. Yeah, there's a couple of couple of tips, and you know, I know your wife does your cooking for you, but like <laughs> my spaghetti, I like I used to be a chef. Yeah. yeah. So from the age of 14 to 22, I was a chef. So I obviously finished school, and then after that, I was a full time chef. Mm. Um, so that's probably why I find the food really easy to get mm. down, is because it tastes, it's not bland. Oh, mine's um, so bland. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I, th- I think we, I think we need to come well, over. So and bland. Oh man, but I, I'm like sitting in that mindset, like going, "This is, I'm eating this for a reason. This is an outcome-driven meal right here." Yeah. But, and I, I'm like having to enter a mental state where I'm just like a robot. We <laughs> should do a day of eating with Lachlan today. Yeah, no, I think uh, I need or to book just like a in. meal prep, we can do a cooking show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it is exciting um, when never, never in my life before have I actually had my nutrition on point, and often in my life I've reflected and wondered. What would my performance be like if I had nutrition on point as well? Yeah, so I've always tried and, you know, read articles and, you know, tried to spend as little money as possible. But, mm. you know, after losing to Marte down in Sydney, how long ago was that? That was eight months like ago. Like January or something. That yeah, was. okay. So 10 months ago. Yeah. My partner, Heather, we don't share the same wife, <laughs> just both our wives are named <laughs> Heather. Um, she comes, you need a coach. You need a mm. coach. You should pay for a coach. So, you know, and, I agreed with her, but didn't do anything until uh, was it? When did Yana's come out? It was, oh no, it was after after, after Arnold's. After Arnold's. After Arnold's. After Arnold's. Yep. Um, so we did Arnold's, and then like a couple of weeks after that, I started mm. with Giannis. So that that was cool, and and that was doing really really well. And because I liked the results of that so much, I've just gone. You know what? Mm. Stuff it. Like I'm just going to get a nutrition coach and mm. just bite the bullet. Yeah. And I knew Jay for a couple of years ago from powerlifting. Um, so I hit him up and I've been pleasantly surprised. I didn't know how good he was mm. until now working with him and I'm mm. I'm chuffed. Well, I, I um I had my consultation with him after week one just yesterday and uh I mentioned to him that uh John Brezenk is yeah. is in the top eight now and John Brezenk has to lose like 12, 13, 14 kilos um, <laughs> because he's been drinking beers that's, for a while. It's going to be hard for John because he don't eat nothing but meat and potatoes. Yeah. 
The youth is and, like, and every now and again, Renee makes him have a green supper. Yeah, if, if, you, if you go to John's place, he'll serve you the same meal for breakfast yeah. every day. <laughs> It's eggs and and peppers, yeah. um, and then and wrap and, with and Monterey Jack four or five cheese. coffees. He'll <laughs> skip lunch, then he'll come home and he'll grill something and he'll drink a lot of beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Double IPAs usually. But now he's <laughs> now he's got a uh, he's got to drop 12, 13 kilos. And I said to because I spoke to John a couple of days ago, and I said, John, uh, this nutritionist is killing it. Um, you should. You he's should, a nutrition um, coach. Nutrition Just coach, and. Um, and John, John said, "Ah, what, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna tell me?" And I kind of tried to tell him what he was gonna tell him, but I didn't represent very well. Obviously, I don't have the knowledge yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and John was like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna go keto." Uh, no. And then I told I told Jay that, ke- and he was like, "No way, you cannot let John do that. No. Do not let John just go keto." He said that will, yes, it'll lose body weight, but he will lose so much muscle mass, and he'll lose a lot of strength, and he'll feel like yeah. rubbish. And yeah, and and he explained to me the finer points of carbohydrates as you were talking about yeah yeah and jay you know when he's bulking he keeps mm. his protein and fat the same and the guy's eating 600 grams of protein uh, mm. of carbohydrates oh, a day geez. and like you know i've lost a significant amount of weight and like i was getting a little bit chubbed but I, you know super heavyweight i was just like mm. yeah whatever mm. um, i'm bigger and i'm strong um but now i'm stronger and leaner and i haven't lost any muscle mass and I've mm. probably put some on. Mm. I uh, think so. Well, judging by the reactions of the world, I think you have. Yeah, I certainly feel better and my recovery is way better. Mm. Um, like we pulled yesterday and nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about that? Yeah, yes, yesterday I, I, we pulled, we we had a uh, simulation ready to go so we were hitting mm. um, and I, I saw a couple of comments on Instagram. Dude was like, I would need to take a week off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that. yeah. And, and, and you, I mean, you got a little bit of a luxury because you're the stronger man. But even me as the the weaker man, there, uh, I trained hard today and I didn't feel a thing. There's not yeah. a problem. <laughs> so. so I have programmed day off today, which was nice. So I did squats, but yep. you know my elbows weren't sore mm. from squatting, and yeah, usually that low bar position kind of cranks yeah. on things. Yeah. And and that is what, not that I've been on the nutrition long enough to to really attribute so much of it to it, but uh, I, I can say I'm excited right now about the effect of not only having a good strength coach, but having a good nutrition coach yeah. in peaking me for this event, I feel like it's a, a bigger factor than even I ever appreciated. Yeah, and it's given me a hell of a lot more performance, uh, uh, confidence with my performance going in to Zlotty that I've there's no stone unturned. Yeah. Like I'm going into this going, yeah. surely, like I know I'm one of the strongest yeah. guys going in. Yeah, strategy on point, strength yeah. on point, nutrition the on point. Peaking on point, like everything is Mindset on point. on point. Yeah, and Ooh. it's just like if I lose, that's cool. If you it's lose, like, that's it. It, it, it yeah. It's a beautiful place to be when you can just be comfortable losing. Like if you lose in this circumstance, you just, man, shake the dude's hand, you're yeah. a badass. Yeah, but and, it, I, and I just need more time. That That's yeah. all I think. It, become, time, time, it becomes time. inevitable in your own head. You just think, well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's like even if, if you get top eight, just say that's that's for me my worst case scenario yeah. is I scrape in, get like six or seven. And right? you're facing the <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. Not top, not top eight. Oh, okay. I mean, in the top eight, it's Lottie. Yeah. You know, that's worst case scenario in my head is I'm, I'm still going to be in the, in the yeah, front yeah, half yeah. or front quarter at least. Gotcha. Um, and it's just time. Like, mm. I know, like, the, the more I keep going, like, we're only, like, I'm just turned 30. Mm. And I'm three and a half years in the sport. I'm not slowing mm. down at all. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, within ten years, there's there's a world championship there. Like, I'm so confident of it because I'm doing everything. I don't like yeah. apart from you. Yeah, there's no one else I know <laughs> that is doing everything like that. Of course, you know the Latvians are, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it'll be really, really interesting. Like. It's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. Um, I think we're, that we're making it to the top the, 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 I, I, in my head. Yeah. I, no well, that's the thing we talk about. Um, the confidence it gives. Uh, I've yeah. never. I'll I will say that I've never been to a tournament feeling the way I do now. No, nah, never. Nah, me either. It's exciting in my head. I'm. Just, I, I get I get shivers down my spine thinking about it. Yeah. Thinking about. I know how much I can do in a wrist wrench side pressure off the go. Yeah. When I it, it, when I come up against someone unknown, I'm just like well. You're a wrist wrench now. And I know that I can do 65 kilos. And by the time I'm Zlotty's round, I might be 70. I, I, I fancy 
my odds of throwing a 70 kilo dumbbell at someone and seeing if they can catch it. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that that is makes what me, it is. that makes me confident. I tell yeah. you, like no, it does. Even with the, with the back pressure, I'm, you know, it was a hundred kilo for three was my, my biggest back pressure number. Mm. And I think if you're going to lean back on me, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lean back harder. Like I can pull your whole body over. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah. Anyway, this is all, all the numbers in the gym are really nice. Yes. You know, they're, they're really nice and they, they elicit a lot of confidence. Yes. But what happens on the day with experience and speed and, mm. and the things that we're not entirely used to, like, are we strong enough to just boss, you know? Mm. And, and what what stops are we going to have to pull out to uh, yeah. to do well? So, my my biggest thing going into it in on a strategic sense is to because uh, I'm someone who is always focused uh, quite a bit on disengaging my opponent's power. Mm. This time around, I'm not going for that. I'm going for securing my own. That is yeah. my biggest thing. Is look, I don't I don't I don't say mind if you're going to be strong too. I'm going to be strong. There's, yeah. there's, there won't be any flash pins where I didn't engage power. If you're pinning me, you're going through my one max. That's it. Yeah, and that's kind of how I've always yeah. <laughs> arm wrestled for the most part, with the exception of now really focusing on speed. So I have reaction mm. timers on my phone now for when I'm doing reps and um, you know doing hit training with someone like yourself who's experienced that isn't just you know going to cry at me when I yeah <laughs> like I'll tell them hey I'm hitting and then they whinge anyway yeah um, and this is part of why I've you know, the Sunday night training has become, mm. you know, for me, it's like the, the main Brisbane club that we all have here, you know, uh, and I'm, that's why I'm look, really looking forward to your facility. It's going to mm. allow us to separate the pros from the AMs and still intermingle, but I can spend, if we're getting yeah. ready for a competition, I'm just with yeah. the pro guys. Yeah. Um, it, it's interesting, our club, but we've had such an evolution where it, we don't, we no longer need to recruit actively. It just it oh. just grows. Yeah. Um. But like you said, we we it, it's definitely like any other pyramid. It's got a, a pointy end of elite, and then a lot of novices that are having fun at yeah. the bottom, and everyone in between. Um. And, and that's awesome. Like, and that's where the top guys come from. Is maybe they get a little bit of taste of victory and go, you know what, I might. Mm. I might take this real serious. Yeah. So. And I, I, I remember talking about it maybe three years ago and at the time it was far-fetched, but now it's becoming a reality fast. I think the Brisbane arm wrestling hub uh, will will generate multiple world champions and will be yeah. recognised as one of the best clubs on the planet yeah. in a not that long a time. No, because <laughs> like there, there is... More guys in the Brisbane club that have gone, you know what, I want to take this mm. all the way. Where in the other clubs, there's, there's less of that. Yeah. But interesting to note too is uh, Mate Warangi Heta Morris from New Zealand is off to Romania. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. He, he's kind of paving his own path and I hope he does he come well. and he moves to Brisbane. <laughs> well, he, he has talked about it a few times in Brisbane. You know, uh, like addressing you, the, the arm wrestling audience out there, if you, uh, I've, there's been a lot of elites that have been getting the bug recently on like uh, I could move to Brisbane. No, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> but everyone, just let's just say everyone who comes to the Brisbane club goes, man, you guys have a good, good group of people. And uh, I've heard a lot lately. Neil pick up Iron Shapes Iron. Um, mm. It's the way. It's it, we're very fortunate. Uh, an elite that by was them- in my recent post actually. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, an elite that's by themselves, it's hard. It's a hard thing. John Brzezink, um, he he's quoted as saying the the one of the reasons why he retired, he felt, was that he just had no good arm wrestlers around him. Mm. And so he couldn't train the way he always trained. For, for him, he needs strong people. Yeah. Um, uh, and even if it's not for the, the table time, it's just the motivation that you get from someone else training hard in a system yeah. at the gym. Um, definitely drives you in. But you know from week to week that that guy's been working his ass off all week and he's yeah. going to come, <laughs> come to you the next week. He's just week I, after week. Is I gotta, I gotta, t- I gotta tell you something that Todd Hutchins told me. Uh, that, that's kind of cool. Exactly on that, that line was that um, after he met you and uh, just before he went, he's like, you know, me and Giannis, this is Todd talking, me and Giannis are now kind of unofficially in a competition with each other as coaches. We're going to see who can uh, take their athlete the furthest. So <laughs> you need to beat Lachlan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so, so, so there we go. Todd Hutchins has called out Giannis Avalon in a coaching, <laughs> coaching war. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> and he said, in six months, Ryan, you need to be you need to be up there. You need to be hanging with Lachlan. I know, but the thing is, is I'm just getting stronger, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that, that, it, I love that. Nothing more. Um, yeah. It's so cool to have someone else who you know is not leaving any stone unturned. Yeah, and, uh, and invested. Like I, I get my every month. I get my program from Giannis. Mm. I, I swear he's trying to kill me. <laughs> I go, really? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> but then, you know, and I, and I get why he does it because it takes me a week of tell the mm. you know, quietly just like looking at my program going, oh my God, <laughs> getting halfway through workouts going, I don't know if I can finish. And then I force myself to finish. And then after about a week or a week and a half, like I'm upping the ante and I'm upping the ante all the time. So, mm. yeah, it's been a really interesting, like I look back at my old programs and just think, Oh, my workload now is yeah, it's so much more. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It, it, my reflections on Todd's routine for me has been uh, I've I've said to Todd a few times, "Can I work harder?" And and he keeps on looking at me like, Are "You serious? You telling me I'm not working hard enough?" I'm like, oh, "I just I just I came from the background of of doing st- stupid amounts of reps, mm. so I, I I get went like today speed day, eight sets of three is over really quickly." On the working most valuable set, especially when you get your cardio up a bit, yeah. And then I had, then I do a bucket load of volume and all that sort of yeah. stuff, and that's all good. But man, I, I I keep telling him I want to do more, and he's like, "Trust it. Don't you don't go off the rails. Trust this mm. system. I did twenty years, and this system has never failed me. I've progressed constantly. So trust that your number yet your numbers are going up stupid amounts at the moment." Yeah, and just trust it. It's been interesting to watch your programming as well because it's very West Side Barbell, and he does yeah. talk about that a lot. Where Giannis is, it, it's a mix. Mm. So I have four week blocks, which is very much like the juggernaut system in powerlifting. If anyone's uh, familiar with that, they have um, yeah four week blocks, and they usually undulate between hypertrophy and strength, and if, mm-hmm. you know high strength, hyperf- hypertrophy, strength, and peaking. If you're not peaking, you just kind of revert between yep. uh, the two. Um, but because there's been a little bit of a muddle up where we're doing nationals and we're not doing nationals, we're doing Zlotti. I've had a couple of strength blocks in a row and, it, uh, you know, I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's – the training is always hard, but I always adapt to it really quickly. Yeah. Um, and and that's, that's when, like, last two weeks of every program, he goes, add bands, do everything you can. And that kicks mm. me in the head. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember before I started – this program, um, the outside perspective looking in was that I was going to just get hurt. People thought, no way can you do Todd Hutchins training, uh, you weak ginger. Um, <laughs> that's basically what the sentiment was. Yeah. And I can tell you right now, this has been the most injury-free period of training of my life. Yeah, I've, I've not been <laughs> injured like in any of my training. Like yeah. I haven't even felt like not even close. that's going to snap soon. Like yeah. just like don't get me wrong, my one rep max days, I feel a deep deep inner ache <laughs> in my elbow. <laughs> You'll get past that. No, 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 every time like at at my at the rep that is the failed rep when I when I release off and I back off and and acknowledge defeat on that damn that damn weight um, the flooding of wow. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, have you seen how I release? It's just yeah, like... Yeah, grab it with the other just, hand. And, like, and then... <laughs> and I'm still holding it and it's just... There's no load on it. And I'm like, just slowly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like... But that's not injury. That to me, like... Mm. It, it's a... I've I've now done it for... Uh, what well, I'm at week 13 or something with Todd. Mm. And um, and every week... Uh, I'm becoming very accustomed to that feeling. And... and and as Todd likes to say, it's not about listening to your body. You can't be an elite athlete. If he's, he, he says if you listen to your body, you're going to uh, have bourbon and porn. You're not going to be out here in the gym training hard. Oh, you're not. So. Like, there's been, there's been a couple of days where I've just gone, you know what, Giannis, I need to take a day or two off mm. or the week off. And what happens is, is I have a day off and I'm like, you pussy. <laughs> and then I combine work. The, if I've missed a workout on Tuesday. Yeah, you catch it I, off. I, I'm supersetting Tuesday with Wednesday workouts. <laughs> like, and, I, and, I, and I've got a three hour workout and I'm just bashing my, and I was yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I haven't missed a day yeah. at this program in how many months? Yeah. Um, you know, I'll, awesome. I'll either have to play catch up and, and you know, combine workouts, or, mm. but I've never actually missed. Yep. A no, program. No, that's uh, awesome. A day, so yeah, well, yeah. Well, I think that's 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 the thing, isn't it? Like, a lot of people. Uh, I think one of the cool things about this is that we have a blueprint now that we can 
Um, we can we can pass on and share. It's something that does work. Um, well, the programming for so Todd is not so much established as a coach. Where the the Latvian system through their Patreon site, they have levels that mm. you can uh, go to. I I don't know how much it is, but the lowest is like we're just going to spit you out a program, and you yep. can YouTube yep. what those exercises are, and then you go up a level and you get like face mm. uh, FaceTime or you get interaction x amount of times per month. And then mm. I'm kind of on like the gold. <laughs> the gold standard with, with Giannis and uh, yeah so well, I, I get a lot of contact really lucky really grateful that I get the amount of yeah. uh, contact I get well hopefully w- hopefully the one day the sport grows enough that uh, Giannis is just on a commission off your your winnings yeah I mean it heads that way Jay how, look how much has Jay already he's got yeah, a few I, clients now yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly, exactly so yeah. Uh, and uh, ho- hopefully hopefully John if you're listening uh, you give Jay a call because uh, yeah and Jay will have yeah. the greatest time of all time on the roster too it's well but worth it. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Anyway, the, the, there's a lot going on for for both of us. As yeah. we we there is that that uh, third member Jordan Davis who bought his ticket today. Yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> I already told him uh, you're on the you're on the couch. Because <laughs> Arizona very comfortable, John. But I was on the floor <laughs> and I'm the heaviest guy there. And I was like, yeah. Oh, I, I, I think Grant Grant got that because he got drunk the first night and passed out. I think that was how he. And then you were too like, polite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were too polite to kick him out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Jordan Jordan's coming along. He's like the Vitali Lalayton of the 78 kilo class. Yeah, or the Tom Holland. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's he's got a bigger hand than Tom. I think he's got a bigger hand than everyone. Um, it's going to be good to see him in the mix as well. Yeah. But um, cause we he's got, one- we got to fire him up. I think we've got to put like some some Russian stimulants in his, <laughs> in his pre-workout drink. Well, he it. needs some shoulder. Like he he is so much hand control and nothing. Yeah. in the shoulders he, and chest. He could almost afford to not do arm wrestling specifics and just do bodybuilding for a while, and he would become a beast arm wrestler. Yeah. Even powerlifting, but I don't think your shoulders will be able to cope with it. But start with bodybuilding and just get some meat on your frame. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's going to be a killer trip. Um, it's only, only six and a half weeks away. It's crazy. Um Looking forward to it. Yeah. It's been really cool the amount of support we've had on- online. Um, uh, it feels weird not being told I'm shit. <laughs> I'm so right? used. To, I'm so used right. to that. Yeah, it's really, it's really odd. Like the the comments of no chance of like way less. Yeah, and even on the Facebook, on the like the the YouTube um, forum. Yep. I knew that was going to be positive, and that turned out really well. But the Facebook, I was like, yeah. oh, I'm not because they. <laughs> the last one that I was on was the a yellow one, and it was like seventy eight percent people said he was going to win. Look, they were right. Yeah. But. <laughs> Yeah, oh, damn, seventy eight percent. But now it's like yeah. fifty fifty. Yeah, well, yeah. I think you, the YouTube polls had like ten percent of people thinking you were going to win it. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's nice. But yeah, it, this is going to be the biggest lottery I yeah. think in in the last. Will I say a decade? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be bigger than last year. It's going to be good. That top eight's a, an amazing draw card to it, and yeah. and the potential to qualify for the top eight is a big yeah. draw card. And I mean. He, he's, I, I guess my, <laughs> my like little little secret dirty goal, <laughs> just beat Sandris. Yeah, right handed beat Sandris. <laughs> I don't care about the rest of the draw. Yeah, uh, I don't have anyone in particular that, I, that I'm dreaming about beating in particular, but um, I just want to be there at the pointy end. Me too. Be there at the pointy end and uh, qualify for that top eight, and then get six rounds of John Brzezink. Have you got a flag? We should bring. Cause, <laughs> yeah, we need yeah. to take. We need to get a flag. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching tonight and listening if you're there on the podcast. Um, And Lachlan, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, thank you. Yes, that's a bet!